Bonjour, my name is Mikey, and welcome back to the new installment of where I rate my desktop icons based on how attractive they are. No, this is Quora's Quests, where I give you the benefit of someone else's experiences because I am 21 years old. So today's episode, how long will software engineer salaries be so tippy top high? So if you are thinking about going into software engineering, whether you are a computer science student, you're planning on majoring in computer science, or maybe you're already a veteran, stick to the end of this video so you get all those lovely stats. So I've also done some research as well, which I will include at the end of this video, and you can find all the links down in that little description box below. So our answer today comes from my dear friend who I've never met or interacted with before, Kyle, who is a software architect. And it should be noted that this answer was answered in 2018, so a bit dated, but I'll do the job. So Kyle's answer here is sort of long uh, and I didn't wanna just read it word for word. So here are the important bits that I think are useful. But let's slide into these DMs. Software engineers are likely to have high salaries for many generations at least, but the industry is likely to change significantly over that time. New and rare skill sets will always cause some software engineers to make seriously inflated salaries. Currently, you see that with the big data and AI related skill sets. These are highly paid because it often takes a decade of training to earn the highest salaries. And you have to be really lucky, luckal. You have to be really lucky to be in the right place at the right time. One trend which will divide software engineers is the rise of low code platforms. Salesforce is a good example. These platforms allow lower paid BAs and admins to take on developer-like responsibilities and generally inflate the salaries of the relatively fewer software engineers still needed on the platform. These platforms will likely widen the gap in salaries between below average developers and their more skilled peers. The other trend is IT becoming more of a business partner than a cost center. Companies undergoing successful digital transformations need professionals with strong IT skills who can also be successful in the boardroom. Software engineers who make the move to more business facing roles will see significantly higher salaries than those who are still spending most of their time writing code in their 40s and beyond. So what I gathered from my best friend Kyle's uh, answer here was that software engineer salaries are pretty much safe. They're gonna be high for quite a while, but you just have to keep up with emerging technologies and you really gotta set yourself apart as with any other field. Uh, so I found this Forbes article and in this Forbes article, they make a lot of like weird distinctions between like upper level or like top tier graduates and then like lower tier graduates. I don't really know what they mean by that. But anyway, I'm gonna use their lingo. Since 2010, students of the top tier quality, meaning students who did very well in their courses and graduated from really well-known universities and prestigious universities, saw an increase in entry-level software engineering salaries from about 80,000 to 140,000 and their lower tier compatriots, their lower tier others, saw an increase from about 60,000 to about 80,000. You know, so I'm also a, a frequent user of Reddit. So I found this Reddit post from about a year ago uh, from a software engineer of 21 years, where this software engineer was basically tracking their salary over their 21 year career, and they happen to live in San Francisco, which is a large tech hub. If we're just looking at this graph here, we see that from 1997 to about 2000 was, you know, the dot-com bubble. So we see like a massive increase in salary, which is insane for your first, essentially, four years in an industry. You go from probably 60,000 to 210,000 within like four years is insane. But then the bubble burst and the crash reaching almost back down to where this person started in 2003 with about 60,000. But ever since then, it's sort of, you know, gradually increasing, Not nothing, nothing drastic as in the prior years, um, which sort of indicates to me that this person stuck with just sort of one company for a while because of that sort of gradual increase. And as a user, of the subreddit CS career questions, I know that the biggest jumps in salary come from switching companies and not sticking with the current company. 
So this graph sort of indicates to me that this person may have stayed with the same company for a long period of time and just had that sort of steady growth every year. So maybe like five, 10,000 every year. In 2017, they might have taken a slightly lower salary instead maybe opting for a little bit better of company culture. So one thing briefly about company culture, there's a lot of things to consider when you're planning to go into a new industry or whether you're graduating college to maybe become a software engineer for the first time, whether you want to move into a large tech company or maybe you want to move into a startup, two different sort of experiences. If you want to wear a lot of hats and maybe take a slightly lower salary, but have a greater impact, maybe move up in the company a lot faster, startup is your option, but it's also a lot riskier to work at a startup because at any point maybe your um your fun funding runs out and you just suddenly you're just out of a job or maybe you can't make uh you don't get a paycheck a certain way so it could be a lot more stressful but it depends on what you want at a large tech company you know the googles the microsofts the amazons the netflix all of those big companies you'll have a very stable job a very stable salary you can expect that you're going to get your paycheck when it's due it's going to be much harder to move up they're just immensely deep companies also you're going going to be a lot more specialized. Maybe you're brought in to just do one specific thing. Maybe you're brought in just to do one project. You know, you can't touch a lot of different things. You can't do a lot of different things. So if you really enjoy that, maybe lean towards the startup side. But if you maybe want a little bit more stability, some safety, maybe go to the large tech company side. Some of the advice that I have received was that, that you should sort of join a large tech company after you graduate, just because you get that big name on your resume and you'll learn a lot about processes, like big company processes. So when, if you wanna make the transition to a startup that you can bring a lot more benefit just besides your technical skills, you can be like, hey, at my old company, we used to do these processes to get things done faster, you know, have much more of an impact. Now, I think another beneficial thing is to look at salary expectations over time. Now, so I found this little infographic here about the highest salary expectations for software engineers. We see Netflix absolutely dominating the competition with an expected yearly salary of like $337,000. Like that seems absolutely nuts. 337k is an average salary for like an average software engineer is crazy. I mean, have you seen those Netflix originals? I understand why. The other ones are about where I expected. You know, those are top top tier time companies. You expect the top tier salary. So, but now to get a little bit more official, away from blogwoo.io to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and we're gonna look at the median pay in 2018 for software developers. Now I know that's not the same thing as software engineering, but I think it gives a useful comparison. So in 2018, the average salary for a software developer was about $105,000. And we're planning to see from 2018 to 2028, so over 10 years, about a 21% increase in software developer employment in demand so if you're getting into the field of software development, software engineering, you can expect over the over the coming years, demand is going to increase. And this 21% increase is much higher than the average according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So in conclusion, it seems that if you're planning on going into software engineering, you're pretty much gonna be safe for the foreseeable future. As long as you keep up with developing technologies, as long as you keep, um, Stay in char, looking into different positions, you know, all, all that sort of goodness that comes with sort of any profession. If you are new to the channel, my name is Mikey. I make, you know, tech videos, computer science related videos, college advice videos, and sometimes the occasional tech parody now and again. If you did like the video, consider hitting that like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice so that I know you really disliked it. Consider hitting that subscribe button down below. It mean an absolute ton to me. I've been practicing my British accent as usual, as you have seen in some of the outros of my other videos. But it's been a pleasure, everyone. And I'll see you in the next video where I challenge my computer science professor to a wrestling match. Bye-bye.